Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So like we said, we're going to watch um, the explanation or analysis of chapter two, and then in class, we're going to go with chapter three, inshallah. Now, in chapter two, things are a little bit different from chapter one. In chapter one, it was mostly description, describing the characters, describing the people. Uh, we go deeper into the mentality of Pony Boy. But in the second chapter, it's like we open up to a new world. We start exploring a new aspect of the novel. We start seeing the people on the other side. We start hearing from the associates. In the first chapter, we do not have any um, interaction between the greasers and the soshis, except for the one incident where Pony Boy was in class and he was belittled by that young uh, soshi. Now, in this chapter, the boys, mainly Johnny and Pony Boy, meet some girls uh, from the soshis. They interact with them and they find them different from the idea they have about the, the, the soshis. Now, in the very beginning of, of the chapter, we see how they walk into a small shop and look at what the pony boy says. So we bought Cokes, they actually both paid money for Cokes, but Dali, he walked out with two packages of cools under his jacket. So even though they had money, Dali chose to break the law and to um, to steal. You would also notice this at the end of the page. We all had the money to get in, but Dali hated to do things the legal way. And this makes us ask a very good question. So why do they hate the law this much? It's probably because Dali has been through um, several situations where he was not let's say, dealt with justice. Maybe they were unjust to him. Maybe the cops arrested him once or twice without him having done anything. So he decided to, um, to just always break the law. Or maybe he saw that the law system was not good for them. It had not helped them as greasers that the cops never stood up for them, the cops never helped them whenever they were jumped or attacked by the Soshis. So maybe this is his way of getting back at the law. Uh, we see that uh, how in the second paragraph, last two lines, a, a fight started, but everyone left. So they left because they wanted to avoid um, going to prison, they left because they didn't want to get arrested. And this shows us that, let's say they're using their heads, right? So this is one of the times we see that the boys or pony boy is using his head and doing the right thing, avoiding to get caught or to be involved in a fight. Now, we see that Dali was very inappropriate with the girls they met. And we also see that Johnny and Pony Boy had quite a different perspective in the matter. We see that in this chapter, we see there is so much um, in common between Johnny and Pony Boy. And we, all, we mentioned this in the first chapter. We said that Pony Boy expresses himself, expresses his emotions through Joni. So whenever we feel that Joni's character is developing, we're expecting that Pony Boy's character would be developing too. And I'm going to just hint it now, but we're going to explain it in detail when we reach chapter three, because chapter three is very juicy. You notice that in this chapter, Joni stands up to Dallas or Dali and tells him to quit being so annoying to the girls. And we also understand from Pony Boy that this never happened before, that Joni never stood up to anyone, especially not his hero, Dali. 
In chapter three, we also noticed that at some point, um, Pony Boy stands up to his brother, Daryl, and asks him to quit what he's doing or to stop shouting at his brother, Soda Pop. So this relationship in the development of character makes us um, understand the connection between the two characters. And it also helps us foreshadow certain things related to um, Joni himself. Now, look at this one. Uh, I wouldn't have felt so embarrassed if they had been greasy girls. I might even have helped old Dallas, but those two girls were not our kind. Again, the separation between the Soshis and the, um, the Greasers. This one is a clear indication of how they see themselves as a being from two different kinds. So it's like two different species. So I had heard the same tone a million times, Greaser, Greaser, Greaser. And again, <clears throat> here we see that Pony Boy is not happy with being classified as a greaser. I mean, if, for example, I were to be classified as something and another person calls me based on that classification, if I'm happy with who I am, if I'm happy with my identity, I wouldn't feel bad being called that way. And similarly, Pony Boy should not be upset being called a greaser if he identifies as a greaser. Because again, it's his identity. And if you think about it, Steve or Dallas or um, any of the boys, if, if they were uh, called greasers, they would embrace it because they are greasers. They wouldn't feel so bad about it. So again, here, this quotation shows us that he's not happy with being a greaser or classified as a greaser. The girl looked at me. I was half scared of her. I'm half scared of all nice girls. And we notice here that the idea of being scared, we're going to mention it a little bit later. And it makes you wonder, <clears throat> why is he scared of her? She seems nice. She sounds nice. But he's afraid of the idea of being involved in, um, let's say, in communication with someone who is not their kind. Because remember, he said, she's not our kind, or they're not our kind. So he's afraid of nice girls. He's afraid of, of this different world that he might be engaged with. She then says, <clears throat> you don't look the type. So here again, another indication that Bonnie Boy himself does not look like a greaser, right? And of course, the look here is not only about uh, the outfit, it's also about, let's say, the facial expressions, the appearance, the general physique, how they behave. These are all classified under, you know, how someone looks. And then Cherry says, what's a nice, smart kid like you running around with trash like that for? Now, here, again, showing the differences between Pony Boy and the Greasers, or that classification of Greasers who are impolite, who are not good with girls. But he says, I'm a Grease, same as Dali. Now, here, you notice that he's identifying as a Grease. And again, there is a conflict. Am I a Greece? But I don't like or look like the Greece. Am I a Greece? But I don't fit in with the Greasers. So here, it's like, why are you with him? 
because I am a Greece. It's the only thing he identifies as. Um, okay. Now, at the end of this page, Cherry says, um, or Marcia, they say that they, 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 they mention his brother, so the pop, and they say that we haven't seen him in school. So he says that he feels horrible, like Pony Boy feels horrible to say that his brother is a dropout because it doesn't fit his profile. It doesn't fit um, the personality of Soda Pop. So he had to say, like, yeah, it didn't fit my brother to say he's a dropout. Like, it would fit Dali to be a dropout, but it wouldn't fit Soda. And again, here we start understanding that it's not just Pony Boy who does not fit as a greaser, but his brothers too. So maybe the reason that the three boys are, <clears throat> are, are becoming more like the greasers or are involved with the greasers, it's, it probably could be because of the death of their parents. And in this um, chapter, I think, or in chapter three, we know that it, their parents died like six months ago. Um, we notice here that Joni, again, stood up uh, to, um, to Dali twice, not just once, and he said, leave her alone, Dali. So what's happening here with Joni? Joni is developing really fast. And you might ask why, because originally he's described as quiet. He's described as too scared. He's described as always um, feeling jumpy because of what happened to him. And here we feel that he's manifesting into a new character that's not afraid, a character that is happy to, um, or that is powerful enough to say no to a person like Delhi. And what could that tell us about Pony Boy himself? He's been passive in the entire chapter. He did not speak to Delhi to stop him from being um, inappropriate with the girls. And again, he's quiet. Although Pony Boy had told us multiple times that Joni is usually quiet. That Joni doesn't get involved in the conversation and that he takes, uh, he makes the decisions for him. And yet, here in this chapter, we see it once or twice that Joni himself is speaking up and standing up against Dallas. Joni says, How come you all ain't scared of us like you were Dali? You two are too sweet to scare anyone. Now, remember how this goes. Pony Boy is half scared of the girls. The girls are scared of Dallas, but the girls are not scared of Pony Boy or Johnny. And why is that? Because you're too sweet and you don't look mean. Again, this shows how Joni and Pony Boy are identified as greasers, but their characteristics, their appearance, are different from the concept of greasers or the identity of greasers. So, sure, I said tiredly, we're young and innocent. No, Cherry said slowly, looking at me carefully, not innocent. You've seen too much to be innocent. So the two boys are not innocent because they have been through a lot. Both of them have been beaten by the so she's Both of them have been having hardships in life. So it's not that they're innocent. It's just that they are not corrupted by the misfortune that they have been through. And you would notice that this is the main thing that differentiates one greaser from another how they react to the hardships that they go through. 
So Joni, you would notice in a bit that Joni did not become rebellious. Instead, he changed into the person he is. He became a person who is aware, brave, not afraid of being, um, although Ponyboy tells us that he's scared, but we notice from his behavior with Dallas that he's not very scared. He's actually standing up for what he thinks is right. Okay? But then you notice that Joni defends the gang. He defends Dallas. Dally's okay, Joni said defensively. And I know that. You take up for your buddies, no matter what they do. When you're a gang, you stick up for the members. So, and that's one of the good things about the greasers. In a bit, we're going to notice how they, how Ponyboy differentiates between how the greasers act together uh, when they fight together or how the associates and how the associates fight when, or act when they fight together. So despite the differences that the greasers have among themselves, they stick up for each other, they stand up for each other. And when it is necessary, they stand up against each other. But at the end, they are, they act as a family. The gang acts as a family. And it's probably because if they don't stick up for each other, who is going to stick up for them? The police isn't there. Their parents aren't much of a help. Most of them are dead. Some of them, like Johnny's parents, they beat him. So if they don't stand up for each other, who's going to stand up for them? If you don't stick up for them, stick together. Make like brothers. It isn't a gang anymore. It's a pack, a snarling, distrustful, bickering pack like the socials and their social clubs or the street gangs in New York or the wolves in the timber. He's tough but he's a cool old guy. So here he's making a, 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 like he's making a comparison between their gang and that of the Soshis, describing themselves as um, a family. And here, the, like most of the time, Wolves are known to stick up together for, for each other. I don't know why the author used the wolf pack as an example because wolves are known to um, to act as a family, to stand up for each other, and that they live in order. But so basically, here the author describes a pack as a snarling, distrustful, bickering pack, like the soldiers, and it's quite bizarre and strange because again. Wolves are known to be, like I said, wolves are known to be uh, very family-like, very close to each other. I want you to notice this expression, although it's a metaphor, and it here means to jump out of your skin is to be scared, but I want you to think if it has other dimensions. Could it mean that he is um, jumping out of his skin means acting against his nature, maybe removing part of his identity, living outside his identity, uh, removing the restrictions of, of the greasers? It's something to think about. I also want you to read this one. Really pick them up, Marcia said. We're really Arabian slave traders, and we're thinking about shangaying them. Uh, they're worth 10 camels a piece, at least. This is very racist, I think. And I, not, not I think, I, I'm quite sure. As though, you know, Arabians are slave traders. And we're talking about the 60s, 1960s. <clears throat> this did not exist in the Arabian world. And America is known for slavery long before any other country. <clears throat> um, so it's good to see how like the, the, the Arabs are perceived in literature. And listen to this, 
it also shows ignorance. They don't talk Arabian. I don't think say something in Arabian, Johnny Cake. So here, um, Arabian is not a language. Again, here it shows somewhat racism, ignorance, not being aware of what an Arab is and the difference between Arabic, Arabian, and so on. So it, it's good to see how Arabs are perceived in, in literature. Again, Johnny, for the third time, he says, cut it out. This is the third time we see Joni not being happy with something and speaking up. At first, it was against Dallas. The second time was also against Dallas, and now it's against Tubit. Tamam? Uh, they wanted us to sit with them to protect them against with crack, with, 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 sorry, with cracking uh, greasers like you or wisecracking greasers like you. So here we see that these two associates need protection from the greasers. And if you remember in the first chapter, Pony Boy was like, we never did anything to them. Why would they be afraid of us? Why would they hurt us? Why would they act like this with us? And yet we see that the greasers are disturbing their girls. And they're being inappropriate to them. And here we have Joni, Pony Boy, protecting the Soshis from the Gracers. This is a great shift in event, in events, to acknowledge that the um, Soshis need protection, and to acknowledge that the Gracers are causing problems. In here, there is a description of how the two uh classes the socies and the greasers how they fight among themselves it's good for you to to be able to compare if you're asked to to compare between how the greasers act among themselves and how the socies act among themselves in times of dispute okay we also notice that not all the socies are like each other same, the same way, not all the greasers are like each other. If we compare between Cherry and Marcia, Cherry said that she would never drink the Coke that um, Dali wrote her, okay? But Marcia was okay with it. So it's, see what it, what it says here? Uh, it's about the principle. It was the principle of the thing, that she was mistreated, by Dali, Cherry was mistreated by Dali, and she decided that she didn't want anything from him. So she did not take the call. Marcia, although she too was um, inappropriately addressed by Dali, she too, she did not act like Cherry, and she was okay with having three coke. So again, the difference in characters between the, um, greasers themselves, uh, sorry, so she's themselves. She smiled and her eyes showed that her mind was on something else. Joni, he's been hurt bad sometimes, hasn't he? It was more of a statement than a question, hurt and scared. Now, you notice here again that Cherry is quite, um, she's quite understanding, she's very friendly, she cares, she's caring, she's sympathetic. And she wanted to know the story about Joni. The question is, wasn't Pony Boy also hurt by the Soshis? Didn't he too look as though he was beaten? So why didn't she notice that? Why didn't she ask him about being beaten? And why didn't he tell her that he too was beaten by the Soshis? Why did he tell her the story of Joni, not his story? Or maybe he and Joni are one, not two. Again, it's a good question to ask. Here we see that um, Steve, the guy we're made to hate, he's very kind to Joni. 
looks like Joni forgot his jacket and he wanted to take it to Joni's house. So this is the, the act of someone who's considering the act of someone who loves his friend, okay? He looked up and across the field with a stricken expression on his face. I think we all heard the low moan and saw the dark motionless hump on the other side of the lot at the same time. So they reached him first. Johnny was lying face down on the ground. So they turned him over gently and I nearly got sick. Someone had beaten him badly. If you go to the final line, uh, Steve closed his eyes for a second and muffled a groan as he dropped on his knees beside Soda. The description of the event is similar to what happened to Pony Boy. Similar incidents, similar reactions, but by different characters. In the when in the accident or when Pony Boy was beaten, it was his brother who um, stood next to him and was very uh, furious about what happened. Here we have Steve. So we notice that they act as a family and they care for each other. And the Steve Randall that we are made to hate, he cares about this little boy, the part of their gang or their gang, gang, their gang member or their family member. And he cares. So it could be a, a, an exam question. Compare between the behavior of and the description that is made by Pony Boy. We also see how Derry uh, ran towards them. And Daly was there too, swearing under his breath and turning away with a sick expression on his face. I wondered about it vaguely. Daly had seen people killed on the streets of New York's West Side. Why did he look sick now? So maybe Daly was did not really see the things that he told them. And when it was real, Daddy felt scared. So Daddy, we are told, was in New York. He saw a lot of people getting killed. He was involved in a lot of gang um, fights. But here, he saw Joni lying on the floor. He got all sick and he couldn't handle it. So again, are they just showing off to one another? Do they pretend to be tough? Again, a question that we need to explore more in the novel. <clears throat> Living in those conditions might have turned someone else rebellious and bitter. It was killing Joni. The, the killing Joni part is very important. What does it foreshadow? He had never been a coward. He was a good man in a rumble. Man? He wasn't a man. He was a young boy. He stuck up for the gang and kept his mouth shut, good around cops, but after the night of the beating, Joni was jumpier than ever. And I want you to remember this part. <clears throat> and Joni, who was the most low abiding of us, now carried in his backpack back pocket um, a six inch switch blade. He'd use it too if he ever got jumped again. They had scared him that much. He would kill the next person who jumped him. Nobody was going to beat him like that again not over his dead body. He was killing Joni, not over his dead body. What does that foreshadow? And then Cherry said, also she's aren't like that. Not all of, not all of us are like that. He says, sure. Um, Delhi had jumped people. I want you to like, let's first explain the first part. Just the way not all greasers are the same. Not all sources are the same. Okay? So you can't really group people under one identity. You can't just call all the rich people socials and all the poor people greasers. Every person has his own identity. is different from one another. Now, look at this one. Dali had jumped people. Although the word jump was explained to be as um, only used with, with the Soshis. But here we have a greaser jumping people using the expression jump. So was Pony Boy honest and truthful when he said 
we did not hurt them. We did not do anything wrong to them. You steal. You um, speak inappropriately to their uh, to to the girls, and you disturb them. You mug them, and yet and you jump them, and yet you say, "We don't hurt them." I wonder why they hurt us. Listen to what Sherry says. We have troubles you've never heard of. You want to know something? She looked at me straight in the eye. Things are rough all over. So here we are, we are exploring a new perspective. We are expanding our horizon and our understanding. Here we see that um, the other side, the Soshi's side, is not so beautiful and 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 fairy like and perfect they do have problems it's not a wonderful world there so he says i believe you but at the end of the chapter he says i wonder what things trouble these rich people so he says i believe you but does he really believe her the little boy does not believe himself. Why would he believe what she says? As a result, Joni never spoke to girls much, but whether that was because he was scared of Steve or because he was shy, I couldn't tell. We noticed that when the girls came or when he went to the girls, he started to look around to, to make sure that Steve wasn't there. So, and, and this is contradictory because we noticed that he stood up to um, he stood up to Dali. Sorry, Steve. Um, I'm sorry, I confused the two. So we noticed that when the, when he came, he he started looking. I think for Dali. I'm not sure if it was Dali or Steve. I'll. I'll go back and check and let you know. Um, I really couldn't see what Soshis would have to sweat about. Good grades, good cars, good girls, Madras and Mustangs, and Corvairs. Man, I thought if I had worries like that, I'd consider myself lucky. I know better now. Now, here, the I know better now shows development in his character, development in his awareness, but the last lines or the previous lines show us that um, he did not understand the kind of problems that the Soshis would have. The only thing he saw was the appearances. He saw that they had good cars, they had good grades, they had good homes. What could possibly go wrong? And I think if we reflect this on reality, we would notice that as people, we feel the same way. Sometimes you look at another person and you think, wow, they're having the best life any for anyone could wish for. They have money, they have good houses, they have good cars, they have good families. But you don't really know what happens inside those homes. You don't even know what how they paid for that car or how they bought that house. And you don't know about the troubles that go inside that house. So all of these aspects, all of these things should make you um, understand that what you see is not always um, the truth. Sometimes people are good at hiding their problems. They're good at not showing the world their needs. But Pony Boy did not understand that, even though Cherry was silent for a moment and, and posed and told him, we go through things too, rough things. He, he did not believe her. He said, I believe you. But we noticed that he could not grasp what problems they could really go through or have. Inshallah, in chapter three, we're going to be doing a lot of discussions because it is filled with details that need to be addressed. So I'm hoping that by then you would have read 
uh, the chapter. See you on Saturday. Inshallah. Salam